Hello and welcome to the GFA YouTube channel. In this video we'll be showing you how our swivel chairs are put together and showing you a few simple tricks to make assembling your chair easier. Now we will be assembling the Shanghai chair in this video. If you don't have a Shanghai chair, don't worry, as all our self-assembly swivel chairs follow a similar method of assembly. So hopefully this video will still be useful to you even if you have a different chair from our range. So without further ado, carefully open the box and check to make sure you have all the parts you need. If at this stage you do find you are missing any parts, please contact your retailer who will be able to order these parts for you. So the first part of the chair that you're going to want to build is the base of the chair. For this you're going to need your fixing pack, your chair legs, your assembly parts and the fixing instructions. Now in the box of wooden legs that you receive you'll notice that there are nine legs in total. That is five for the chair and four for the footstool. The footstool legs are taller but not as long and the chair legs, which are the ones that we need to build the chair base, they are not so tall but longer than the footstool legs. To attach the legs to the spindle, which can be found in the assembly pack box, you'll need 10 bolts labelled F on the fixing pack and 10 washers labelled G. Ensure the bolts are securely in place, but avoid over tightening the bolts as this could damage the screws and potentially even crack the wood. Now all of our chairs may be built in a similar way, but their bases are different. So on the Shanghai for example, it has a hexagonal base where all the legs attach to it. The Elisa, in comparison, simply has a metal spindle that slots into place. And if you take the Toulouse, it actually has a spindle with holes at the bottom, and holes at the bottom of the base, just line up the holes and screw them in and you're good to go. Now that we have built the chair base, we are going to move on to attaching the arms to the U-frame and then we'll put that on the base we just built. If you're wondering which way around the arms attach to the U-frame, start with the chrome piston facing forward. This bit attaches to the underside of the front of the seat pad. As for the arms, the holes face in towards the U-frame. Make sure the highest up hole is at the opposite end of the chrome piston. This attaches to the seat back. Now you have your arms on the correct sides of the U-frame, grab your fixing pack and take six bolts labeled B, six washers labeled E, line up the holes on the U-frame to the arm, and using the Allen key provided, screw them into place. Now on some of our chairs there's actually an extra step to putting the arms on. On the knees chair for example it comes with this wooden part. Now once you've attached the wooden part we recommend you line up the upholstered part of the arm on top of it, screw that in and then work on the rest of the chair. You may notice that not all our zips have tags on. This is because you don't need to access the insides of every part of the chair. So don't worry if these are missing, they have been removed to prevent children from reaching inside the chair and pulling out the padding. Now we have the arms attached to the U-frame, we can simply pop the U-frame on to the base. As such, and if it's securely in place, it should be able to swivel quite nicely. Now your chair is starting to take shape, the next bit is to attach the seat back and the seat pads to the chair itself. Now there's actually two methods to doing this, I'll be showing you both. One will be following the instructions and one is a method that we use here which we find as easy. The assembly instructions ask you to attach the seat pad first. Find the two prongs at the front of the seat pad and place the chrome end of the U-frame in between them. Then grab bolt O and nut I from the fixing pack. Slide the bolt through the prongs and the tube end of the U-frame and lock it in place with the nut. Now in the assembly instructions it says to attach the back to the seat while the seat is attached to the U-frame. This can be a bit tricky when the seat doesn't have much room for manoeuvre when attached like this. So what you need to do is simply pivot it up to expose the holes at the back of the seat pad and that should give you enough room to attach the seat back. Once you've angled the seat back into place, take bolt C from the fixing pack, slide it through the prongs at the bottom of the seat back into the holes at the back of the seat pad and screw it into place. When lining up the holes, try tightening the bolts halfway first on each side, then once both bolts are in, tighten them fully. 
Alternatively, if you find the way that the instructions tell you to do it too difficult, you can always put the back and seat together off the base of the chair. Probably the easier approach because as you can see, you've got all the room in the world to attach the bolt to the chair. It's worth noting at this point that on the underside of the seat pad, you can find the chair's batch number. You will be asked by your retailer to provide this six digit number beginning with the letters GFA if you need to report a fault to them. Now, while we're talking about the seat backs on our swivel chairs, I just wanted to point something out on the Elisa. It's something that a lot of customers call in and have questions about. When lining up the seat back and seat pad on the Elisa, ensure the prongs are sitting flush together. If you find that one side sits flush and the other side has a gap, reposition the prongs so that they sit flush on both sides. Now that the seat and the back are on the chair, we now have to make the back upright. In order to do this, we need to unzip the arm to expose the hole. That will allow us to lock in the bolt through the hole in the arm into the back. Unzip the arm fully to give yourself as much access to the inside of the arm as possible. If you have an Elisa chair, you're going to need to peel back some of the internal padding to expose the hole. But once this has been located, line up the holes and take bolt A from the fixing pack, put the screw through the arm and just like we did with attaching the seat pad to the seat back, tighten the bolts halfway at first on both sides to make lining up the parts easier. Then tighten fully. Now if you want to put your feet up, the Shanghai chair, as long as a lot of our other chairs, also come with footstools. In this case we have all the parts needed left over to build the footstool. The stool pad itself will have front written on it so you know which way that face is, as well as the spindle, so you know that you're not putting it on back to front. Take the stool spindle, which can be found in the assembly pack box, and line it up with the holes on the stool pad, making sure the word front is facing the same direction on both parts. Use the bolts labelled D on the fixing pack to screw this in place. For the legs, use the remaining bolts and washers labelled F and G, slide the bolt through the holes and into the stool plate labelled H. Once you've done this to all four legs, slot them into place onto the spindle and tighten the bolts. One last thing to do is put on the recliner handle. That will go on the underside of the U-frame. You'll see a very clear hole that is meant to screw. Tightening the recliner handle will keep your chair upright, so if you want to lean back and relax in your chair, loosen the recliner handle and just lie back. Now to ensure you get the most out of your chair, you're going to have to take care of it. We recommend tightening up the bolts every three months to prevent creaking and to maintain the chair stability. To clean your chair, use an absorbent cloth or sponge and gently wipe down the surface with a small amount of lukewarm water. Then allow it to air dry. And if you require any replacement parts, contact your retailer and provide them with the chair's batch number and description of the fault. But that's all for this video. I hope you've been able to help you along the way. Uh, if you have more products of ours, you can always check out the rest of the channel to see more videos just like this. Uh, if you do need any further help assembling your chairs, please check in the description below for our contact information.